so we downloaded all the data now and um, this is my favorite application as you can see with uh, filters I can show in this case only the nodes of the Purox and the city boundary I can also disable the filter then I see literally everything this is usually uh, always a bit of daunting task for the computer if you zoom in a big area like that and have all the data um, so with the filters I can also say for example show me the administrative levels and if they have the tag of uh, Baguio City Assessor's Office and this is, let's zoom in a bit here this is one of these uh, polygons and here you can see this polygon, it belongs to Irisan Barangay it belongs to Pinso proper and it's also defining to Pork 28 um, it has the check date 2023, April 26, that was the date I got this information from uh, Elmer at the city assessor office with the permit of Mesa Dawi. And the source is then Baguio City Assessor's Office. And um, using this data here, which is there, which also if the city would contribute it themselves, they, they can literally add any information the city wants to add and uh, they can visualize that in JOSM. They can say, uh, let's edit this a bit, let's copy that, then we make a new filter and this filter, we say all these admin levels are gone. I just want source Baguio City Assessor Office this I also want gone and the members also I want just to see everything which has a source the Buggy City Assessor Office so I submit that filter this one we disable now and then we flip this around so this is all the information I got from the Buggy City Assessor Office um, and then information also like this. This is another information what we're adding right now. I'm working on this right now. Uh, this is from the Philippine Statistical Authority. I got the data from the uh, uh, census of uh, 2007, 2010, 2015, and 2020. Um, this was just some where I started adding data, but I will do that uh, thoroughly once I get the time for that. This is how you can filter then all the information from the city. And for example, you want to know. Uh, now, first things first. Let's say you want to make a backup of this, right? You want every week or so you want a backup of that. Disable the filter. Then we say here the data layer. And we can save this as, then you can choose here as OSM file, but you can also say I want it saved as a JSON file. Um, you can also change it, save it as a PDF file. JSON is usually um, if you want to import or export it somewhere else. Um, but let's say you just want it as OSM. Then let's say we do this on the desktop for now. Let's say test backup and we give it a date. We give it a date 2023 in May and it's the 5th. You can also automate this with a script, by the way. So it's done every day automatically. Someone starts their computer and it's being backed up. As you can see, this is 140 megabytes. That is the backup data of the whole of the city of Baguio. As you add more data, this grows, of course, but as you can see, even if you put 10 times more data there, then it's still just a gigabyte. So if you do a backup every day, after a year, you're just talking about 400 gigabytes in case of 10 times more data than we have today. In case of how it is today, you're talking not even about 100 gigabytes. A modern backup hard drive has terabytes, so you can back up daily 
for many, many years to come, and all of this information is in the hands of and control of the city. So even if ever there were something to happen with the data on OpenStreetMap, you still have the data, so all the work the city spent on it is not lost. And here comes the nicest thing. You can even set up your own server on a city server. A mirror server of OpenStreetMap, which means even if OpenStreetMap gets attacked by, uh, what do I know, uh, saboteurs, um, hackers, whatever, you still have your own server, you still have your own backup, you can host everything yourself for all these city offices, you can even do IP range limitations on your own server, so no one else can access it if you ever want to lock it. The, the, the power is with you, that's the beauty of OpenStreetMap. And the fact is, although commercial companies would never allow you this, like Google, OpenStreetMap actually allows you to do this. US City can do this. Whatever you want to do, you want to host your own server? Great. You want to do your own tile rendering? Do so. You want to add your own tags? Great. Let's check here uh, on the wiki for OpenStreetMap, for example. Google OpenStreetMap. Um, here I have a lot of information. Um, the wiki is here important. This is, the, uh, this is a very nice concept, but I want to point out to the city. Any tags you like. So you don't actually have to always check on the Wikipedia. If the city says we want to add information on the database, that's great, you can do that. There's only one really uh, prerequisite on OpenStreetMap. You need to maintain it. So if you add data with the intention of not maintaining it, that they don't like to see. So the foundation, they want to keep it neat and clean. And um, no one is going to force you to maintain it. No one is going to delete the data, but it will be frowned upon. You can do it, but it's going to be frowned upon if you put data there and not maintain it. But if the city decides we're going all in on OpenStreetMap, we're going to use this service, it's a great service. If someone in the city, anywhere, makes a change in the city, the CEO, the assessor office, whatever change is going to be, the fire department puts a new fire uh, hydrant somewhere, um, companies, you can mandate companies in the city, PLDT, Beneco, Bawadi, to use OpenStreetMap. The moment they add it on OpenStreetMap, it's automatically known, as I previously shown in the video to QGIS, if, if you connect there and query the data, you automatically get the latest, newest uh, data from just a second ago. Um, if, if you just maintain that, if everyone in the city maintains their stuff, then we're good. And you have really a great service where all these offices instantly always have all the data available. Um, yeah, i shown you here, you can just export that data here. Um, it's only 140 megabytes now. If, if this data is going to be 10 times more, it's still just a gigabyte. Even if you're going to get 100 times more, you can still do a daily backup on modern hard drives. So the limitations are basically non-existing. You can do whatever you like. Um, now, the next question would be, but how do I see that if someone added data? Oh, well, here comes a nice thing. You can use this overpass again, what I've shown you on the QGIS. This one here, if you use the plugin. Um, you can actually use this plugin to even show you most recent data. Uh, I then actually format the overpass API for this one. I did that for the web browser. Verifications, overpass, buggy city, three days, yeah. So this is, this is my query for the um, Baguio City Assessor's Office source. And let's see if someone edited at that in the past few days. If someone touched that data, we can actually verify if someone does. 
and sometimes that might be legit. Now, as you see, I ran it, and it says here, notes 104, weight 3, and areas 1. Okay, so we click here, so you zoom to the data, and here we see now what has changed. So we click here on the way, and here you see this is my work. I actually forgot already what I did there myself. Adding sources for all the boundaries. This is the latest information view history. Oh, yeah, I see it now. See. In the old version, I forgot to add the source and the check date. I, I forgot to add that. I did that to everything, but obviously there were a few where I missed that. And with the filtering technique today, I finished this work four days ago, and then I was busy with other stuff. And today I finally had time to check my own work. So I used the filtering and said, show me everything I've added and where I didn't add the source and the check date and then it showed me these polygons so overpass now shows you that today on these points here I actually updated that I've I made a few uh, not errors I just forgot a few points um, let's say the last four days did someone beside me add that so here I see no the last three days it was only me let's run it again four days but we see it's the same the only person who worked on it is me then let's go for five days that's the last day I worked on these boundaries yeah, so here you see there's a lot of data. You can actually trace how I worked, how I edited the information from the assessor office to OpenStreetMap. You can trace everything. Uh, you can, this is in days, but you can actually also do it per hour, per minute, so you can really see who does what. You can click here on the node. Okay, there's multiple nodes at once, so I need to zoom in a bit. Let's select only that node. And you see here the node, you see the check date, you see the source. Uh, you can open this node then in the new tab. And here you see the, the latest work I did, edited. And if you click on view history, you see this is version 1. So this is the point where I actually for the first time edited this information on the map. No one else ever touched it after that. Um, so here you can actually follow did anyone change that information so you know you what you did and you can check if someone else worked on it in this case no no one did um, but you can make this query as as complicated as you want there's actually a whole um, wiki on that again as well, overpass turbo and you can script that, you can automate that completely uh, this is the open overpass turbo open street map wiki um, this is the language guide that is what we need and this is very strong, it's very powerful, you can actually say um, let's go for user yeah, you can search here for specific timestamps, versions, change set, usernames, IDs uh, you can select for a specific user that he did something you can filter that you say uh, the city gets its own usernames for its own people who contribute data to OpenStreetMap and you can then do select all the data added by that user and then changed by someone else 
So this is very strong, this overpass e I, uh, API. And um, there is literally no limitation. You can verify everything that's going on. You can do the daily backups. So you can always see if someone else alters data. Now, this is actually a benefit for the city. Namely, what I've shown you here, in this case here, where I added as mapper, as citizen, I added here the official boundary by the assessor office here. And then I added additionally this one, where I say, well, this part claims to be barangay of uh, to be part of the barangay of Queen of Peace, where the city assessor office data says it actually um, is not the Queen of Peace. It belongs to uh, I forgot already which barangay it was. I added so many barangays here recently. Ayak um, Kayang extension. So this is then the benefit of the city. The city can actually see then, hey, there's a mapper, there's someone in the city, and he says, there's houses there who have a different barangay designation on their house number plates, as what well is aware to us at the city. We have different data as what people on the ground are reporting to us. So we, we send out someone, someone from the city, and we're going to verify that. We're going to confirm that. Is that true that our data is not the physical reality on the ground? And then you can contact the barangays, you can contact the pork leaders, and you can have them sort it out. The thing is, right now you know there are errors, but you don't know what are the errors. Right now there are uh, differences between uh, city data and real data, and barangay data and pork data, and as I found out, a lot of barangays and the city don't even have poor data. With the open street map, with all this feedback, so the city puts that information on the map, and then you get the feedback from people and mappers who tell you then that there are still some issues. And now I understand people say, yeah, but then we might get problems because of the issues. Then, then you think totally wrong. You must think like this. The problem is there. I can close my eyes and ignore it, but it doesn't solve the problem. The problem is still there. There's only one way to deal with the problem, and that is find a solution for the problem. So if I have discrepancies in data between physical reality on the ground, between what the people on the street are using, and between the data is, that is aware of the city, that's indeed a problem. But it's not, a, it's not going to be solved by closing the eyes and saying, what if we get more problems if it's getting if people get known of this, if it's getting awareness. The beauty is, once you know the problem, once you get identified the problem, you can deal with it. You can find solutions for it, because let's, let's face the fact, every problem has a solution. It's people coming together, people discussing about it, and then change the boundaries appropriately, where, where everyone can agree to, and the problem is solved. You can only solve the problem if you get awareness of the problem, if it's known. You can only get it known if you get collaboration between governments, companies, constituents, citizens, also guests, tourists. Only if you get all this feedback, if everyone is communicating, only then you can solve the problems. Because then the problems, they come up. Then you are aware of what are the problems. This is the beauty of OpenStreetMap. It doesn't take you any additional effort because it's already a centralized database which is distributed and used decentralized by governments worldwide, by universities and institutes worldwide, companies like Grab, etc., they use it, people, they use it, and that is really the beauty of this system. So I, I would strongly encourage for the city to really consider this opportunity because it's a great opportunity. It shows everyone what is the physical reality, what is the official data, where are problems, so we can identify them. 
and we find solutions for them. While at the same time, we save a lot of time, we have to add it once on the database. After that, we just need someone who maintains it. If there's a change anywhere, who does the change is also then the person who gives the feedback to OpenStreetMap. He does this only once. It's a little effort. I can show you. If I want to change here, if I want to change here, the polygon, for example, this boundary here, it shifts a bit. I just move it like this. I click on upload. I'm not going to do this now, but I click on upload. Et voilà. The whole city instantly has the new boundary data. I don't need to distribute files over USB sticks anymore. I don't need to send emails anymore. I don't need people running from one office to the other office with USB sticks or with papers printed out. I don't need all of that. It's just there. It's just there. I added the data. I upload it. And it's available to everyone. And this is just an example of uh, administrative boundaries. It works the same with streets. I add a street name. I change the street name. The person who is responsible for that, he only needs to give feedback to OpenStreetMap. And everyone knows. It's the same with addresses, poor boundaries, fire hydrants, parks, bicycle lanes, uh, sidewalks tactile pavement or not, crossings, is there a zebra or not, is there a curb or not, all that data, I only need to add it once and everyone knows automatically. And all this data can be backed up on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, you can even do it every minute if you like, it's a, it's a bit weird if you do that, but it's possible. With these filters, you can select the data only you want to see. With the overpass querying, you can fil filter out or download only data you need to know. So the example was with administrative boundaries, but it works with everything really. Um, another thing, a renderer I can show you. Which is very interesting, which I just found out today it exists. I didn't know someone was interested in that. Where do we have that? Uh, Outer's render. So this is. Do, 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 do. Ah, open infrastructure map. So this I just found out today is very interesting. What they do here is they show the energy line. It's only the main lines which we have mapped because no one in Baguio ever took the time to map the Beneco, the small Beneco line. So this is just from the Philippine power grid really, which is mapped here. Um, yeah, and it shows you here exactly how these lines are. It shows you the cell towers of the mobile companies, PLDT, globe. Again, not everything is mapped because it's voluntarily driven. I added a few myself. Um, but the city, the, the mayor, could tell these companies if you operate within the boundaries of Baguio, you update this data for Baguio. And these companies, if they do that, then everyone in the city, all the offices, they have this information available. And um, as the API was set here, the query for these power lines and for the cell towers, you can do the same here for the querying in uh, QGIS. And then everyone in the city works with QGIS. They can literally visualize this information. And uh, well, I, I can indefinitely show you examples of this, but this is really... Um, what I want to point out that in QGIS or also in renderers, you can be very selective with data. You can download this data specifically tailored for what you want. And then you don't need this anymore. These files which are manually transferred per USB stick or maybe someone printed 
it out for you or emailed and you always risk that data might be outdated. All of that is gone if you just make the merger to OpenStreetMap. So I did this for the city now as example. Um, the more data the city gives me, the more I will do for the city. But of course, city officials can also do it themselves. I can teach them how to do it very easily, import data into OpenStreetMap, and then just maintain it, that's it. Uh, put the proper tag there, put as a source, the office who adds and maintains this information, um, put the date, the check date, that is then the date where you actually verified that uh, the data is correct. So you can always see when was data entered, when did we get the data at the city, um, when was data altered, when was it updated, you can really trace that. And at this point then I'm going to conclude this video, it's already way too long as what I wanted to show, but that is because it's, it's really so versatile, it's unlimited what you can do with it. Um, so I hope this explains a bit with very simple querying, it explains a bit how you can actually use data from OpenStreetMap within QGIS and how you can backup data and um, how you can query data using the over overpass turbo to actually look for changes and who did these changes uh, so to take away all the fears the city might have about who owns the data uh, we might lose the data we might invest time and money in it and then it's lost i want to show here it's not you are still in control of it you can always back up you can always uh, look at changes committed by someone else you can always revert um, as with the example of this uh, queen of peace and kayan extension barangay boundary which which is in reality where houses are different labeled as the official data uh, you can use this to communicate then with people or also with members you can ask them hey you sat there there is an extension claiming it belongs to Queen of Peace, but our data shows it's actually Kayang Street. Why did you do that? And then this mapper will give you feedback and says, well, I walked there, I did a personal survey, and I saw this was marked on the street. This was on the house signs, on the house number plates. They say they belong to that barangay, and not, not to this one. So then you get the feedback as city, and you can say, Let's send an employee of the city there, verify that information, and if it's true, we got to discuss with the people. So I hope this, this takes away all these fears the city might have, and uh, show all the benefits that come from it. You can identify problems, you can then solve the problems. If you do not identify the problems, you can never solve them, because you don't know where the problems are. So use it. It's for free, it's totally for free. It's living from donations and volunteers, big donators like uh, Kart, um, Facebook, Grab, Microsoft. All these companies are already supporting OpenStreetMap. Governments worldwide are using it. I see no reason why the city shouldn't. And that's where I want to conclude this video.